Russia carries out live fire drills in the Black Sea as the Kremlin maintains that any ship attempting to access Ukrainian ports could be targeted. The White House confirms the Ukrainian army is using US-supplied cluster bombs and the United Nations condemns Russian attacks on Black Sea ports. Final preparations are being made for what some have called the most important general election in Spain since the death of Franco. Danes dominate the Tour de France with Kasper Askren winning the 18th stage and Jonas Vinahar protecting his huge overall lead ahead of Sunday's finale. The Russian Ministry of Defence said on Friday that its navy has been carrying out live fire exercises in the Black Sea. The news comes after Vladimir Putin pulled out of a deal allowing grain to be exported from ports in the region and warning that any ships sailing to Ukraine through the waterway would be potential military targets. In a statement on Telegram, the ministry said its Black Sea fleet has been practicing live firing of anti-ship cruise missiles at a target ship in the northwestern part of the sea. The Kremlin has warned of the risks of establishing Black Sea ship routes without Moscow's participation. However, Kyiv has said it's prepared to continue exporting grain through its southern ports, despite Russia pulling out of the deal. Ukraine is one of the world's leading exporters of grain, and many countries in Africa and Asia depend on its imports to fend off food shortages. Growing disdain in Ukraine for Russian President Vladimir Putin, Mykolaiv in the south of the country has been reduced to mounds of rubble. Residents here have been bombarded by the Kremlin's forces since Tuesday. Dozens of homes have been completely destroyed, and rescue workers are doing what they can to salvage what's left. <laughs> Meanwhile, 100 kilometers southwest, the port of Odessa has come under fire for three consecutive nights. At least one person died on Wednesday. Beijing, who claims is neutral in the conflict, confirmed that a Chinese consulate building currently under construction was damaged in the attack. Russian State TV says drones have also dropped on cities controlled by invading forces. This apparent Ukrainian attack supposedly targeted an administrative building in the Crimean city of Rozdolne and reportedly left one person dead. Former U.S. President Donald Trump could be facing a third criminal indictment, this time for efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election. Trump missed a midnight deadline on Thursday to accept an invitation to testify before the U.S. grand jury, tasked with establishing whether crimes were committed. Head of the investigation, special counsel Jack Smith, announced on Tuesday that Trump received a target letter. This indictment was voted by a grand jury. A target letter is generally sent to people who the Justice Department is poised to indict. What it means is that investigators have gathered evidence that links a person, in this case Donald Trump, to a crime that's being investigated. Grand jury members met for six hours on Thursday discussing evidence of Trump's attempts to overturn election results in the days ahead of the Capitol riots. Trump has already been indicted for connection with an alleged hush money scheme, as well as his handling of classified US documents. He has denied any wrongdoing and claims the ongoing trials are a plot to damage his 2024 presidential campaign. Spain's national election on Sunday will take place in the middle of a heat wave and during the summer holidays, when millions of Spaniards are likely to be on vacation away from their main residences. As a result, postal voting requests have soared, with a last-minute extension allowing people to cast their votes up to Friday, although many have already done so. The two main parties and two smaller parties have been holding their last rallies in the run-up to the poll. Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez called the snap election after his Socialist Party and smaller far-left coalition partner Podemos were resoundingly beaten in local and regional elections. A few days before the elections in Spain, the campaign is intensifying. 
as polls continue to point to a change in government. Current Socialist Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez could be on his way out, with the Conservative People's Party likely to come out on top. It would probably need the support of the far-right Vox Party to govern, though, something that hasn't happened since the end of the military dictatorship in the 1970s. This would likely bring about many changes in the country. The discussion on economic proposals has been limited during the campaign, but experts agree that things will almost certainly be shaken up. Yo diría principalmente por la política fiscal. ¿no? Uh, la oposición critica mucho el aumento en uh, los impuestos en los últimos años, también el aumento en el gasto de pensiones por la reforma recién implementada. Y yo pienso que el Partido Popular tiene la pretensión de reducir el aumento en el gasto y también de reducir uh, impuestos. Lo importante, si en España se pretende reducir impuestos, casi directamente se tiene que recortar gasto. Y después de casi una década de austeridad en España, pues recortar significa realmente tocar uh, hueso. The government that comes in will also have another challenge, to reduce both Spanish debt, which stands at over 110%, and the country's deficit, which is the difference between the country's income and its expenses. If there is a new government, they could see the changes at a level economic, but certainly they could see these changes at a level social level. En este barrio en el que estamos, el barrio de Chueca, en Madrid, es el barrio más representativo del colectivo LGTBIQ+, en la capital española. Hemos venido a hablar con una asociación que representa al colectivo para que nos cuenten lo que ellos ven como un posible retroceso de derechos. One piece of legislation in the sight of conservatives is the so-called trans law. The legislation means that sex change is not treated as a medical disorder and allows it to be done from the age of 16 without any medical examination. It was passed last February, and the Conservative People's Party has promised to repeal it. Bueno, volveríamos a estar patologizadas, volveríamos a estar supeditadas a certificados médicos, a que nos tutoricen, a que no podemos elegir ni siquiera si no nos queremos hormonar, porque volveríamos a daríamos un paso atrás gigantesco, ¿no? Ahora mismo con la ley que que tenemos aprobada, las personas trans. Podemos cambiar nombre y sexo y no tener y no tener que someternos a operaciones o a hormonaciones, ¿no? On Sunday, Spain will be closer to knowing the new color of its government, but at this stage, nothing is being ruled out, not even a repeat of the election, which last happened in 2019. The UK ruling Conservative Party lost two seats in three parliamentary by-elections on Thursday, but just managed to hold on to former Prime Minister Boris Johnson's old Uxbridge seat. In one constituency in Yorkshire, the main opposition Labour Party overturned a huge Conservative majority to win the seat. And in the west of England, the Liberal Democrats also overturned a large majority to win a contest. The results are a worrying indication for Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and his party, which is hoping for re-election next year. Half of the, population have the United Nations Human Rights Chief says he's worried about an increasing rise in populism and anti-freedom or rights movements in the world, including in Europe. In an interview with Euronews in Brussels, Volker Turk said that the main victims of this concerning trend are refugees, women and the LGBTQI community. We need to fight against bigotry and populism because it's every, all of it is ultimately about who we are embracing human diversity and the richness of who we are, accepting who we are, no matter who we love and, and how we want to engage in our lives, I think we need to respect this. This was the biggest promise from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And we need to educate all those who, who want to push us back into an era that is long gone by. I would like to, to ask you if you think that the United Kingdom migration bill that has just been passed somehow to avoid that asylum seekers present their no. demands uh, in the UK territory is a blanket disregard of humanitarian law. Well, it's clear that the UK illegal migration bill is in violation of both international refugee law as well as international human rights law. Article 14 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights talks about the right to seek and to enjoy asylum 
from persecution. So you have a right to seek and enjoy asylum from persecution. But if that law bars that right, it is a tragedy. What do you think of the recent agreement between the European Union and a country such as Tunisia, which, of course, also was mentioned by United Nations agencies as a country where human rights violations occur? We need to understand why people are moving. They are moving because of human rights violations in their own countries. Sometimes they end up in horrible situations, in Libya, for example, or in Tunisia, where they are pushed back or where it's, where it's very difficult for them to survive. I mean, Libya has these horrific detention centers for migrants and asylum seekers. So the big thing and the big ask is, can we not find alternatives to these horribly dangerous routes that migrants and asylum seekers often have to take? Mr. High Commissioner, thank you very much for being here okay. News. Thank you very much. Cyclist Kasper Asgreen is much to celebrate after winning the 18th stage of the Tour de France. The Danish rider was part of an early breakaway and later stepped it up a gear, leaving Pascal Achelhorn to settle for second place while Jonas Abrahamsen completed the podium. Meanwhile, Jonas Vinnehard has protected his huge overall lead with some jaw-dropping fast riding to crush Slovenia's Taj Pogaccia in the Alps. Thursday's stage offered respite to the main contenders on a flat 185km route from Montigny to bourg en bresse The defending champion leads two-time tour winner Pogaccia by 7 minutes and 35 seconds, with the UK's Adam Yates sitting third.